there everybody and welcome back to the Blossom Crochet channel. If this is your first time visiting then do just take a moment now to subscribe to the channel so that you can keep up to date with all of my crochet tutorials. This video is going to be a really simple basic introduction to Tunisian crochet. Now there are loads of different stitches when it comes to Tunisian crochet but I'm going to be starting with the really basic really simple stitch and it's just a one row repeat and it's super easy. So this is one that I've started working on and I'm going to make this into a nice long squishy scarf. Now I'll obviously show you that when it's finished but I just wanted to get cracking with the tutorial so that you can see what it looks like and obviously learn the technique that you will need for this really basic stitch. Now you can use this for blankets as well it's really versatile but that is what it looks like as you work up. Now the yarn I'm using for this project is Boho Spirit in the shade Harmony and you can get Boho Spirit from Snufflebean Yarn which I will of course leave a link to in the description. I didn't want to do the tutorial using this yarn because I don't know whether you can see but it's a little bit fuzzy, a little bit fluffy and I thought it might just not work the best for up close tutorial so I'm just going to be using some normal cotton DK for the tutorial but yeah as I say I'm working this into a really wide and it will become a wraparound scarf eventually but it's really thick and squishy and for anyone that's wondering that's what the back looks like <laughs> looks very knitted from the back as I say I'm just going to be using some cotton DK that I've got here and I'm going to be using a 6mm hook. So the thing obviously with Tunisian crochet it's a really really tight weave when you're working it up so you do definitely want to use a hook that is at least two sizes bigger than what you would use normally and you won't get it looking gappy or anything like that so you don't need to worry about that. Like I say this is a DK and I've used the same 6mm and you can see it's really a, a neat tight stitch still. So yeah I'm going to be using this 6mm. Anyone that's wondering this is a Knit Pro Tunisian crochet hook. So as normal you will start with a slip knot on your hook. And when it comes to Tunisian crochet for this particular stitch you don't need a set number for your foundation chain. You can chain any amount that you want for the width of your project whether that be 120 for a blanket or 28 like for the scarf that I was making that I've shown you. You can chain any amount at all. So I'm just going to be doing a small sample piece obviously. So you yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through and just complete your foundation chain for whatever size you require it to be. Okay I've just done a really small chain obviously because this is just a very basic sample piece so I've just done a chain of 12. So into this second chain from the hook so you're going to ignore this first one and go into the second and you'll insert your hook through that chain, yarn over and pull up and then you'll insert your hook into the next chain along, yarn over and pull up. Again into the next chain, yarn over and pull up and the next and you'll work that all the way along. You'll insert your hook into every chain until you get to your final chain next to your slip knot and you'll just keep yarning over and pulling up a loop. Okay, So in that very last chain yarn over and pull up. So then you will have all of your loops on your hook like so and we're going to start working the stitch back across. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through one loop. So yarn over and pull through that first loop Okay, so that end stitch is always different. You're only going to pull through one loop on that very first stitch as you work back across. But now for the rest of these stitches, you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. So yarn over, 
pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and just continue that all the way along. So yarn over, oops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So I'll just stick with you because I'm right near the end of mine. And then when you get to the very end, you'll yarn over and pull through those last two loops. And that is how you should, oops, that is how you should look all the way along. And now again, we're going to work back across this entire row and you can see all of these vertical parts to the stitches from the row below and they are what we are going to work into this time. So you don't do anything around this first stitch just here, you will go straight behind this vertical stitch here. So you don't do anything here, you go straight behind that one. And then again, yarn over and pull up behind the vertical part of the next stitch. Yarn over and pull up. And again, behind the next. And again, you'll work that along so you're just going to go behind the vertical section of each of the previous row. And as you get towards the end, let me just do this one. You can see now we've got two stitches left. So we've got this last vertical stitch to work. So we will insert and yarn over and pull up. And then we want to work into the last stitch from the row below. So if you turn your work slightly you will see that you have got a little V here which is where you want to insert your hook. So you will insert your hook there and if you see there I have got two loops yarn over and pull up and that is all of our stitches worked into and then again this first stitch you will yarn over and pull through one and then all the rest you will yarn over and pull through two so yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two and you do that all the way along until you get to the end of your row. So again when you get to the end you will have your final yarn over and to pull through both. So again that is how we are looking. It never looks like much for your first sort of five or six rows. It, the pattern really starts to pick up obviously the further on you get. So I'll show you this one final row now just to firm up those techniques and then I will meet you back again to show you how to finish off for the end of your project. So again you don't do anything at this very beginning stitch, your first stitch is this vertical one here and you'll start to see that you get a line that runs all the way up anyway. So, so insert behind that stitch, yarn over and pull up, insert, yarn over and pull up and again work that all the way along and I will just show you that very end section. Once more. So you can see I've got two vertical stitches left to work behind. So there's one and then this next one is the last vertical stitch and then again you want to turn your work 
and find those two loops. So you'll insert behind those two loops, yarn over and pull up, and again yarn over, pull through one, and then work your way back with your yarn over, pull through two. So that is the row that you will complete over and over again. So just as long as you know where you're placing your final stitches, you can't really go wrong and you can just repeat that until your project is as big as you require. And also when working those stitches and getting those two loops, you will find that your edges will stay nice and neat and you'll have these nice V stitches on either side which are nice and neat for your edges. Okay, so once you have got your project as long as you'll need it to be, you're going to want to just do one final row across the top just to neaten up so that you can potentially add a border if you wished, if you'd done a blanket, or if you were doing a scarf so that you can add on your fringe or your tassels, whatever you want, we're literally just going to add a slip stitch border across the top to give you some nice defined stitches to work behind, or to work into rather. So again, in exactly the same principle, you're going to be going behind the vertical parts of all of the stitches. So that part of it is the same, but you're going to yarn up, you're going to insert your hook behind the vertical stitch, yarn over and pull up. But instead of going under the next stitch, you're going to pull that loop through to create a slip stitch. And then again, behind the next vertical stitch, yarn over and pull up and pull through the loop on your hook as well. And again, behind the next, yarn over and pull up and pull through that loop on your hook. So you'll continue that all across your, your, your work. Gosh, I really can't speak today, sorry. And then again, as you get to your final stitches, you will do the same as normal, working behind your very last vertical stitch, which I'm almost at now. So again, behind your last vertical stitch. And then again, turn your work to the side, insert through that stitch and your final slip stitch. And then as you can see that gives you a nice base there with your normal stitches for working any type of border that you may require. And then obviously you would chain one, snip off and pull that tail through to finish. So that is it for this beautiful and very, very simple but effective Tunisian crochet stitch. Like I say, this is the most simple stitch that there is, I think, when it comes to Tunisian crochet. And it really does look very, very pretty. Especially when it's done in nice variegated yarns like these. But you get such wonderful stitch definition when it's done in single colours as well. So it's really versatile and... I do hope that you have enjoyed the tutorial. You can see there the lovely neat edges that you get with it, with those nice stitches for working borders into as well. But as I say, I'm going to continue this and then turn it probably into an infinity scarf so I will loop my ends together and it's going to be so squishy and warm. It's going to be really beautiful. But thank you for joining me today and remember to subscribe and to like the video if you've enjoyed it and also come and find me on Instagram and tag me in anything that you might make from my tutorials. But I will see you for another one really soon. Bye for now.